Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting edition of the Art and Business of Writing podcast. I am your host, Chris Jones, where I am thrilled to bring you Lisa Cherry Beaumont today, all the way from Mary, England. Uh, Lisa is a life purpose coach, workshop leader, and author of the best-selling book, Life Purpose Alchemy, Discover What Fulfills You and Do What You Love for a Living. Her unique six-step system uh, helps Lisa to get people unstuck to love their lives and live with purpose. Uh, so if you're frustrated in your writing business, if you're feeling stuck like your wheels are spinning, if you are stuck in that comparison trap, or if you're feeling like you have to get approval from everybody in order to pursue the thing you love, which is to write and write well, Lisa is going to talk about that today. Uh, she is an excellent excellent person um, to speak on this topic because she is very happy and you will hear it in her voice. So without further ado, I want to bring you Lisa Cherry Beaumont. Hello, Lisa. Welcome to the Art and Business of Writing podcast. How are you today? Hi, Chris. I'm very well, thank you. It's great to be here. Awesome. Now, we've heard a great bio from you, but I want you to expand upon your bio and tell us more about the work that you do. Yeah, sure. So I work with my clients to get them really understanding what it is that make them happy. So it's not only about the type of work that they do, but moreover, it's about how they actually do that work as well. So, um, for example, there are lots of different ways of doing any type of job, really. Um, you could be, let's use the example of a teacher. Okay, so a teacher could be somebody who works um, in a university, they have a set schedule, they work for 40 hours a week, um, they, teach, um, they teach teenagers and adults, or um, they could be a teacher of, um, for example, um, they could be like a language teacher online, and so maybe they've got a flexible schedule, maybe they can move to different countries, maybe wherever they've got a, a Wi-Fi connection, they can work. Um, so there are lots of different ways of doing it. And what I do is get people not only understanding what kind of work is meaningful to them, but also how it will work for them in the kind of lifestyle that they want to create. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense. So we talk about happy. Like, is happy relative? Um, so happy, I mean, there are different types of happiness. Um, it's it's important. One of one of the aspects of happiness. Lots of different aspects to happiness as well. And one of the um, one of the aspects of happiness is actually feeling a sense of purpose. So it doesn't mean that if you do something purposeful, you have to be that person that has you know set up some great big multinational charity. Um, but it just means doing something that feels meaningful to you, feeling like you're doing something purposeful. And that's like a really huge aspect to happiness. So it, it's not only about, you know, feeling like you're a part of something, you know, like your community or your family or, or whatever it is, but actually feeling like you're doing something useful. Now, in your work, you know, I'm sure you work with lots of clients and talk to lots of people. What's a common thread that people say that really makes them happy in their work? Um, the common thread that makes people happy in that, well, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Um, but one of the things that I find generally tends to keep people in the wrong job, Chris, is that they like the people that they work with. And I hear that over, I've been hearing that for years and years. People say that over and over again. Um, you know, when I ask them, you know, what is it that, that's keeping you there? And they're like, well, I really like the people that I'm working for. So it's not only the, you know, the stability and security of, you know, regular salary, but it's very often that, you know, the, the, the friendships and almost that family feeling um, that, that people uh, tend to forge when they're working in an organization for a certain amount of time. In your work, you express that you help people break free and find fulfillment. How does that work? Like, What is the process when you sit down with someone and just examine what it is they really want to do out of life? Like, How do you take them from point A to point B? Yeah, so I've got um, I've got a six step system which takes people through um, first of all looking at what you want your lifestyle to look like because we've all got different ideas of of what an, an ideal lifestyle looks like. So you know, for some it's staying in one place, um, raising a family, um, you know, at a sort of certain schedule. Maybe they like routines. For some people, it's something completely random. Maybe they like a lot of travel. Maybe they don't want children. And there's everything in between. So it's working out what kind of things do you want to have as part of your life. Right? We start there. Um, and, and often what I find actually, um, very often what I find, Chris, is that 
uh, the the two main things that people are missing in the in those early stages of the process are like-minded people. So, so the kind of people that they want to be spending more time with, that's missing, very often missing. And also more time in nature. So spending a bit more time, uh, you know, around, uh, you know, at the beach or, uh, or in a forest or walking in the mountains. These are two things that come up time and time again for an awful lot of people. So we start there. And then we move on to um, sort of figuring out what it is. So we get that, we get that designed. We got, you know, what is it that you want, irrespective of what the actual work is that you're going to be doing, what is it that you want your lifestyle to look like? That's really crucial, really fundamental. And then we look at what is it that is important to you, what's meaningful to you, what matters to you in the world. And it's like, you know, like I just said a minute ago, it doesn't have to be that you, you know, you set up some um, some huge charity to, you know, to change the world in, in a big way. It's just what actually matters to you and we get to the bottom of that what is it that you really want to contribute to society Um, and then we go through a process of understanding what your own personal values are so we look back um, of all the work that you've done and all the courses that you've studied um, and all the, um, even if you've done voluntary work, it could be a job that you were at for one day or somewhere that you stayed for 20 years. We have a look at all that and we get some data out of it and we figure out um, what it is that made you happy uh, while you were there, even if you only did it for you know half a day and then you quit, what <laughs> what was it that made you quit? What was it that made you go there in the first place? Um, and so we we understand what it is that makes you tick, and then we move on to looking at different ways that you could bring these things together. So we look at your lifestyle that you want to create. We look at the kind of um, you know what it is that's meaningful to you. We look at the way that you like to work. So, um, you know, what's worked for you in the past, what hasn't worked for you in the past. And we start to look at different options of the kind of work that you that you could be doing. And we start to put that together. Um, and then we move on to the next step in the process is getting you over your fears. Because once we've decided, um, once it's been decided what you want to do, then there's all the voices in your mind going, well, that's not possible. I couldn't possibly make a living doing that. Who am I to be doing this? And you get all that, you know, you've heard of um, imposter syndrome and so on. And so we start working on your mindset and start taking things step by step. And then the final step is actually just getting started. So creating a goal, um, a firm goal that actually makes sense to you. And then just getting that ball rolling towards that goal. And it's not about, you know, uh, you know, quitting your job and selling your house and you know whatever it's just like the little things that you need to do in order to start making those tweaks to get you moving in the right direction Um, and once you start making those those positive moves you start to notice how you kind of feel like you're in alignment with yourself and so you feel so much better within yourself you feel more hopeful um, and you start to attract almost like you're starting to attract positive things towards you so that's that's how we work together that's how we get started Wow, that's fantastic. Like, so basically you're like helping people to design their life based on their previous or current life experiences. Yeah, based on um, based on their, their previous and, and current life experiences and also the things that they've maybe always wanted to do but never dared or maybe they've never seen a model of how that might work. Maybe their parents didn't do it that way. Maybe their aunties and uncles never did it that way. Um, and so maybe they're like, well, you know, there's a certain thing that I'd like to do or something I'd like to achieve, but I, I you know, that we don't do that in our family. Um, so, you know, how could I possibly go ahead and do that and, and, not, and not feel supported as well? Um, So it's helping them to feel supported. And one of the most important factors to that, actually, is finding people who have done or or are doing something similar to what you want to do and talking to them. Yeah, no, I think it's I think that's so cool. Like, because I mean, a lot of people that I work around and work with, they're they're always like, I want to write a book or I want to I want to be a really great author or I want to be able to be a bestseller. And they have all these grand ideas. But then you're talking about just putting the passion behind those ideas, taking them from want to actual conception so that they can actually see that it's happening. And it sounds like that's what you do with people. You help them to take these things that they want to do and you make them reality for them. Yeah, exactly. And it's And it's like I said, it's not about, you know, suddenly going from I'd like to write a book to being a best-selling author. It's like like just take those little steps. So, um, 
you know, to, to be, you know, a best-selling author myself and to, and to be a best-selling author, it, it's not just, it's not something that happens overnight, but it's something that's very, very possible and it happens for a lot of people. And it is about that determination, but taking the first step is the most crucial factor. So whatever it is that, you know, that you're wanting to, to, to write about or that you want to achieve, if, if it's, you know, if it's not writing a book, if it's something else, just getting started. You know, just get a Word document open on your computer or get, you know, get a pad of paper and a pen and just start writing some ideas down. And it's and it's all about, um, you know, being I have a, I have a, I have a friend called Chuck Rockroad, actually, who's written a book called Messy on Purpose. And um, he's, it's all about the, 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 you know, the science of creativity and, and what he says in his book, in a nutshell, is start out messy. Start out by just throwing all your ideas down. Don't try to be perfect in the first place, but just start drafting. Um, because that's how creativity happens. It's not about, you know, sitting down and making sure it's perfect in the very beginning. It's about getting your ideas down first of all. So just getting started. It's like, you know, pushing that snowball along, you know, it's that snowball effect. You Once you get yes. started, it, it starts to get easier and easier. Right, right. And so just kind of unpacking some of the things you said, I want to walk through some of these things kind of step by step. So you said in the beginning, just what things do you want in life? So, you know, for the person who wants to start to write a book for the first time, that's like that big, deep desire. What do they need to do to just take that first step? I mean, I know it's simple. So I know the simple answer is like just to do it, but some people still get paralyzed by fear. What do you tell people who need to make that first step to yeah, so um, it's like it's like Simon uh, Simon Sinek, I think is how you pronounce his name. He says, start with your why. Why do you want to do it? Why do you want to write this book about whatever it is that you want to write about? Um, and it you know it could be a what you what you deem to be a selfish reason, and that's okay. Or it could be um, you know a, um, a, a a less selfish reason. It could be that you want to help people with a particular illness, or you want to help people to get healthier, or you know whatever it is that your book's about, or you want to bring these interesting stories is out into the world to entertain people or you know whatever it is your book's about is look at why why do you want to do that um and 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 look you know dig deeply into what is your reason for wanting to do that and keep going back to that when I was um when I was writing my last book oh my goodness I got really stuck and um and I had to abandon it for a little while I thought I'll come back to it but it it was tough going some of the time it was tough going and I had to keep thinking to myself Lisa, your reason for writing this book is because you actually want to reach more people. It's it's not about, oh, I want that best-selling author tag. It, that wasn't what was important to me. What was important to me was I want to be able to get to more people because a lot of people um, will benefit from, from what I'm putting out there. And I just want to make it accessible to them. And sometimes writing down my process, because this is a process that I take my clients through, but writing down my process was hard because I had to really, really think about it and really struggle through it. And it's like, okay, what do I actually do? How do I get this into writing so that it makes sense for someone to follow? Um, and I had to just keep going back to my why. So go back to your why. Why do you want to do this? What's it for? And that should hopefully, if you are really getting to the bottom of why you want to do something, that should move you forward and motivate you. Ooh, that's really good. Yeah. The, you know, the next thing you said was um, that for some people, many things are missing. Like you said, like-minded people and then like time out in nature. And I think that's two things that are that are hugely important when you're especially for writers i mean i think with writers we t we tend to sit down and we stay in front of our our workstations and our computers and then uh we don't link up with other people who who are doing what we do or like us at all and we definitely aren't taking the time to to breathe really to get out to exercise to, to unplug T talk about those a little bit more to just how important it is to one be around people who are like-minded with you and then two the value of just unplugging for your own benefit. Oh my goodness, all of it's so essential, so essential. If you don't fit, you know, we're social animals and, and as well as just being around people, we actually need to be around people who get us, you know, we need to be around people who um, are going to support us and encourage us. So, you know, you don't want to sit down and, and, and start writing something if you've got people around you going, oh, what are you doing? Don't waste your time. You're never going to become an author. It's just a pipe dream. Um, you want to be around people who go, yes, absolutely. What have you written? That's fantastic. Okay, so what are you going to do next? You want people who are going to motivate you and be around people who have already done it 
or are working on it themselves so that you feel because you are going to get stuck of course when you're doing something new you're going to get stuck you're going to be you're going to start doubting yourself um, you're going to unless you've got rock solid confidence which let's face it most people don't you know we all get stuck no. especially when you're doing something new um yeah to have a you know a support system you know whatever that is whether it is um you know somebody who's a coach or you know your best friend that really gets it or if your best friend just doesn't get it all then get some new friends it could be people that you find online in facebook groups or it could be um, a writing group that you go to heck i mean you know there's enough people that want to write that if you can't find a writing group in your area then you could even set one up and i bet your bottom dollar people will come to it because a lot of people want to be writers um finding that you know motivation from having people around you that that are interested in doing the same thing who support your dreams and you know those that have that have already done it as well are um are crucial crucial because they can help you from they can so prevent you from um, going down the route of uh, you know disaster they can say okay don't don't do that i tried that it didn't work let's save yourself six months do it this way um and then the nature thing oh we do, we do need to unplug uh, we have very very busy lives and just having a little bit of time outside it doesn't mean that you know you don't have to go and have a fortnight in the woods you know you can just simply carve out a few hours regularly to go and spend some time just breathing in nature just being away from um away from the noise away from the television away from the computer away from work um away from traffic and shops and shopping consumerism get yourself away from consumerism um and just be uh, be at one with nature just for a little while and it just replenishes that energy that gets sapped out of you in your daily life and then the next thing you mentioned was just bringing things together like a lot of people who do want to write they have an idea but they're not all fully certain well what should i write about this should i write about that i'm interested in this i'm interested in that and you talk about just bringing together experiences like how would you encourage someone who wants to write something but really but how to inventory their interest to find out what that thing is that they want to write. Write them all down. Start messy. Like Chuck Rockrode says, start messy. Start by writing them all down. <laughs> write down all of it. Um, I want to write about this and this. Oh, and this and this and this and this. And, and put them all down. And then start to go, okay, which which of those can I get rid of? Which of those, okay, I don't really want to write about that. And actually think selfishly as well. What do I, never mind what people say they think they want and what other people say that I should write. My mum says I should write about this or, you know, my, my, my aunt says I should write about that and other people are wanting me to write this. Never mind what anybody else wants. Think about what you want to write about. And so look at your big long list, your big scrap of paper with it all written down and you'll know, just look at them individually and you'll know which one or ones are really making you think, yeah. They just get that sense inside when you look at this list because you know which is your priority. And it could be actually that you can combine some of them. It could be, um, I don't know, let me think of an example. I don't think of an example, actually. Maybe you've got a few different interests. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but maybe you've got a few different interests. Maybe it's possible to combine one or two of them. Could you could you could you write about um, you know a couple of different things together in this in the same book that are part that could be part and parcel of the same thing or do they need to be individuals? There's no reason why you can't write a series of books, but start with the one that feels like your priority feels that feels like the thing that you really really selfishly want to write about. That's the thing you should be writing about. Right. No, I love that. Just kind of trying to combine. It reminded me of a very funny story about the fiction author Stephen King. Yeah. And uh, how he always said that he would um, he would base all of his writing on what if this happened with that. And that's oh. how he would come up with all of his concepts. Oh, so I didn't what, know like that. With, Yeah. So like with his, when he did um, Maximum Overdrive, he said, what would happen if aliens – and tractor trailers came together, and that's where he came with that. <laughs> so two two completely oblivious and th things that you would not associate, but he put them together and created this entire novel behind those two things. So oh, he that's said that's cool. kind of that was that was his process is putting things together is that if if and then. That was very funny. Oh, I love that. I had no idea. See, there you go. That's an idea already, isn't it? I've got this idea for this, but I've also got this idea for that. Well, try combining them. See what happens. That's creative, isn't it? Gosh, couldn't get any more creative than that. Yeah, that's fantastic. 
Yeah, yeah. So, but something you said that that kind of jumped out that I want to go back into was yeah. what other people say. Like, how much how much weight does that have on people that you start to work out with? That you start, you know, working with as clients, and then by the time you've coached them through, they're able to get rid of that whole "I need the approval of other people to do what I want to do." Do you know what I find over and over again is people say to me, um, "My, it's usually the mother or the partner, and it's usually you know mother or or." let's say husband, it's usually mother or husband, won't like it, will have something negative to say about it, won't be pleased about it. And so what I usually do is is challenge them to, you know, to see what they do say about it, speak to them about it. And nine times out of 10, the mother or the husband is like, that's great. I'm really pleased for you. Oh, that's great. Okay, well, let's get you started. And it, it's almost like there's something inside you thinking, oh, it's sort of inventing. It is inventing. I would say almost inventing. Invented, definitely inventing that, oh, my husband wouldn't like it. He's not going to be pleased with me if I do this. Um, or my mother's going to be really angry and think that I'm, you know, I'm wasting my time or whatever. Nine times out of ten, it's completely made up and they're actually quite pleased for you. Um, now, I'm not saying that it never happens because one time out of ten, yes, your husband's going to be furious. Your mother thinks you're wasting your time or, you know, whatever. But it's your life, love, isn't it? It's your life. It's your life. It's not anybody else's. And, you know, you're not doing something, um, you know, to anyone else's detriment. You you want to make sure that you're happy because when you're happy, the people around you are happier. So if you go through life suppressing your dreams, then you're not bringing your whole self to the table. You're bringing a part of yourself and actually you're bringing an unwhole part of yourself. You're not... Um, you're not your best because you're suppressing something because you think, oh, maybe somebody else wouldn't like it or, you know, maybe it's true that they don't like it. But that's that's no way to live because you're here, as far as we know, you're here once and you can't suppress your dreams because you think that someone else wouldn't like it and you 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 have to just keep pushing forward. And yes, of course, if you've got a family, then you have to take them into consideration. But you do need to take yourself into consideration first. And if you've got children, think about the example that you're setting to them as well. Um, think about do you want your children to suppress their dreams as well when they when they watch you knowing that you're not you're not really bringing your full self to the table. Is that what you want for your children as well? Or do you want to give them the example whereby um, you really go for it? You really go for life with, you know, grab it with both hands and actually give everything a shot. What do you? Yeah. Now, do you, feel, do you feel like sometimes as creatives, we create martyrs out of ourselves when we do that? Like we just kind of shove all of our, our brightest ideas or our, our biggest aspirations and just say, well, you know, it's just not the right time or I don't have the support. Like, and then before we know it, all of our time has passed. Yeah, absolutely. Martyr is exactly the right word. And I see it over and over again. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, I haven't got the time. No. Oh, my mother wouldn't like it. My husband wouldn't be supportive of that. Yeah. Making Martin. Oh, I could. I'd love to. But no. Make it. It's, it's excuses. It's excuses. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Now, apart, apart from just, you know, familial support and just kind of what other people may think, what are some other reasons that people don't like why people don't pursue what's passionate for them? <laughs> well, oh, there's so many reasons, but I would say um, probably the most common reasons are um, it. it <laughs> it's just two cliches, isn't it? Fear of failure and fear of fear of success, isn't it? Fear of failure. What if it goes wrong? What if I make an idiot of myself? What if I'm really embarrassed? What if you know? What if I I set up a podcast and and nobody listens? Or what if I write a book and nobody buys it? Well, what if? So what? You know. Anyone, what is it? What is it they say? Those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. The fact is, um, anyone else who has written a book, anyone else who has written a book, is going to be like, well, well done. Even if nobody ever buys your blinking book, even if nobody ever buys it, um, anyone else who's, who's ever written a book will be like, yeah, well, good on you for publishing a book. Well done, because it takes it takes a lot of work, and you've actually got that creativity out of you. Um, and anyone who's never written a book, they're probably thinking, wow, like, wow, Chris wrote a book. That's amazing. Wow. And they don't know how many books you've sold anyway, so who cares? Um, but <laughs> it's the fear of the failure. But I would say more than that, it's the fear of the success. Because what if you are successful? What if you do get everything that you want and your life changes? Is there a little voice in you saying, my goodness, if I, if I was a best 
selling author? Would I, would I then have pressure to write more books? Um, what would people expect of me? Um, how much time would I have to spend writing? Oh my goodness, am I going to spend all my time at my desk writing? Is that really what I want? So kind of questioning what would happen if you were to be successful. Yeah, fear of failure, fear of success are the two biggest ones. Yeah, I know. It's it's so funny that you mentioned that, like, you know, people with the what ifs, you know, well, what if what if this happens? What if that happens? It's like, well, mm-hmm. what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't happen? Mm. What if people do read your book? What if people do listen to your podcast? Yeah, right. Like people never look at the people never look at the opposite side of that equation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've got um, I've got a whole chapter dedicated to I've got, I've got this called the what if exercise. There's a whole chapter in my book. I think it's chapter four or five, I forget. I think it's chapter five. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of what ifs. What if this? What if that? What if the other? Um, and, it, and it takes you through like some, some little exercises to, um, to, to, to quell those, those common, it's like the top 10 common what ifs um, that, you know, around maybe starting a business or writing a book or whatever it is that you want to be doing with your life. Yeah. And I want to dive into your book in a moment. Uh, I want to ask you a couple more questions really quickly before sure. we do. With with many writers, you know, many writers, they're they're moonlighting. They're doing it as you know, separate from their day job, and they, you know, of course, they want to do it and build it full time. But I noticed on your website, you talked about the one thing that I used to have when I had a job is that Sunday night dread. Mm. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, how how does having how how does basically infusing your life with passion and having you know a project or something that you're working on that you're excited about kind of get you through those difficult days of doing something you do, that you don't like just so you can get to the thing that you do like? Again, you know, going back to Simon Sinek's start with your why. Again, going back to that, going back to why am I doing this? Um, because if you feel like your work is purposeful, you know, sometimes there's things that I do that I do, you know, I just like, oh my goodness, I've got three hours of doing that today. But I look back at why am I actually doing this? Who am I helping by doing this? Even if it's, you know, some of those menial tasks that you don't enjoy doing that, yeah, maybe there's not quite enough of it to outsource it. So I'll have to do it myself. Um, but why? Why am I doing it? It's that going back to why. That's what will carry you through. Doing something that is in alignment with yourself, doing something that is important to you. That is what carries you through, you know, Sunday nights or whatever. Because you know, there are, there are people who have got um, there are people who have got a nine to five, Monday to Friday, very busy office job, but they love it, and that's because they're doing something that feels purposeful to them. They're enjoying it, um, and so even though they might have that, you know, that kind of you know twinge on a Sunday night while they're ironing their shirts for the rest of the week, thinking, oh, I'm gonna say I gotta go back to work tomorrow. It's not that bad for them because they're doing something that feels meaningful. They don't hate it. They don't get to the desk and think, what is the point of my life? What is the point of my existence? Because I'm doing something that doesn't matter to me. I think, yeah, just that whole shifting the mindset does work wonders. For <laughs> yeah. When you, can, when you can change the way you see and perceive things and know that, you know, you've got something of value that you're also doing alongside of those things. Yeah. Now, let's dive into your book. Let's talk about, you know, your life purpose alchemy. Why did you decide to write that? And tell us what's inside. Yeah. So why did I decide to write it? Um, I, I wanted to put it into a process. It actually started out with um, with another book, which came from a workshop. So I trained as a coach with the Coaching Academy in the UK. And um, as part of the training, they sat us through this workshop where they asked us a bunch of questions. Now, they were coaching questions, but the questions were not linked to our answers. So basically, they sat us in a classroom and they asked us a set of questions. I can't remember how many there were. Um, and so we had to write down our answers to these questions. And what it was doing was helping us to set a goal and to come out with, in the, at the end of it, to come out with, um, you know, the, the, the solution to the, to, the, to the problem and the first steps towards, you know, creating the solution. So, um, you know, you, you would go in with not really any clear idea of what you wanted to change about your life and come out, you know, an hour later with like, okay, this is what I need to change and this is how I get started. And it started with that. Um, I thought this, this, is, this is an absolutely wonderful way of working because I can reach quite a few people at the same time and it's very effective. So I started running those as workshops and um, I wanted to make it as efficient and effective as possible. And so I got um, some of the people that came to my workshops, I asked them for feedback, what worked, what didn't work, what could be improved and from that I started creating worksheets and um, and from these worksheets um, I started changing some of the questions and making them sort of fit in more with um, with the feedback that I was getting and I ended up with um, an exercise which is um, 
it's called my 30 questions workbook. And from that, um, I published a, I published a small book, um, where, you know, you can, you can get started with, with anything, whatever it is that you want to change about your life, even if you're not sure what that is, um, it will take you through a process to, to get you started. And, and from that, I, I started moving into in, in my own work, I started moving into with my clients, um, working with them around their career and their work because that's what started to come really naturally to me and I wondered if there's I wondered if there was a process coming out of it and of course the more you do something the more you start to realize that there's a pattern and I thought well this is a pattern I can do that anybody can do this I can get anybody working through this process and coming out the other end um, without necessarily if they're you know if they're a self-starter if they're struggling a little bit then you know that's why I have clients that aren't necessarily um, they don't necessarily have the right mindset and so it you know it might make them struggle but if they're a self-starter and they've got the right kind of mindset then they can work through this process themselves and so I worked on that for I don't know probably about a year or something um, and as I say I got stuck a few times but yeah I published that I published Life Purpose Alchemy um, because it made sense to me to to allow people to do it themselves if they could I, I wanted to reach as many people as possible because again going back to my why Chris which I haven't mentioned my why is I want people to be doing what makes them happy because each person that's doing what makes them feel purposeful, okay, when they're doing that, when they have a life that makes them feel good, then it has a knock-on effect. It doesn't only affect that person, it affects everybody around them. It affects everybody that they bump into, it affects their children, it affects their parents, it affects their partner, it affects people in the shop, in the street, and everybody, and it starts to spread. And so the more people that I can get doing what makes them happy, the more positive effect we're having on the world. And the more people that are feeling good within themselves, um, the more harmonious, um, harmonious we are and the less aggravation we have in life. And that's really, you know, the kind of world that I want to see. And so if I can just in my little way do that, help contribute toward that, that's what, that's what moves me forward. So that's why I published that book. Wow, that's fantastic. And that's so true, what you said, you know, just in the, in the desire to want people to feel happy because it affects everyone around them. I know that <laughs> if I'm not writing, I can become kind of grouchy. If I'm mm -hmm. not doing the things that I want to be doing or things that I feel like I should be doing with my life, I can feel that misalignment happening. Yeah. And I think that's so true. It does. It ripples out and it affects your relationships with other people. And wow, that's, that's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. It's, it's great. Like, you know, looking at your book. You have such excellent reviews. I mean, people on Amazon are like, you know, saying your books are just an amazing book and that it's like, you know, a great successor to What Color Is My Parachute and that you should carry it around with you. And obviously you've helped a lot of people, you know, with your coaching and your book and just helping people discover themselves. Yeah, yeah. And, and it matters to to get this feedback, to know that it's actually helping people, to know that, to, to get that feedback. Um, you know, everybody who reads my book doesn't leave feedback and that's fair enough. But, but those that do, I always appreciate it because it helps me to push through, through those, you know, those days when, you know, whatever I'm doing in my business is quite difficult, knowing that I'm moving people forward, that it's actually having that effect that I'm trying to create. Yeah. Do you ever have days, I mean, being the passion and purpose person, do you ever have days where you just feel non-passionate and unpurposeful and just, and that's okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's accepting that, you know, there's a lot in the self-development and spiritual world where they say that, oh, you know, you've got to be happy all the time. You've got to be, you've got to feel great all the time. Of course, you no, absolutely not. When you feel terrible, feel terrible. Allow yourself to feel terrible. You don't have to attach yourself to feeling terrible. If you have terrible, we all have terrible days. Absolutely. Um, and it's not about, um, oh, I feel terrible. Quick. I need to do something about it. It's like, okay, I'm going to allow myself to feel terrible for a bit. And maybe I'm going to eat some ice cream or drink too much coffee or you know whatever um and allow myself to feel terrible but realize that it's you know that terrible isn't me that terrible is just an emotion that I'm feeling right now and the more I allow myself to feel it not wallowing it that's different allow myself just to feel that emotion allow it to be without attaching myself to it the quicker it will dissipate the quicker it will leave me and allow me to get on with my life so rather than fighting against you know any sense of um you know tiredness or loneliness or misery or you know that feeling of the blues and we all get it we all get it from time to time rather than fighting it just just going okay that's all right because I'm human and actually I'm supposed to feel emotion and when I feel emotion just let it be and let it dissipate so yes 
Do I? Yes, I do. Absolutely. But I don't attach myself to it. And I don't think, oh, it's terrible. My life's over. It's all gone wrong. I'm not doing things right. No, I just go, okay, it's an emotion. That's how I feel. Let it go. And then, you know, the next day or within a couple of days, I feel fine. Just carry on. Yeah. So how do people, because we're in the digital age where everybody can see everybody's kind of quote unquote life on social media. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you coach people and encourage people to avoid that comparison trap? Because I know the comparison trap will get you to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing. Like for a writer who sees some other writer having great success on social media, and you're like, oh God, well, I'm not having that kind of success. I should probably not do anything. Like how do you break those cycles of comparison? Yeah, comparisonitis, we call it, don't we? Oh, we've got some comparisonitis. Yeah. Everyone else has got a better life than me. Just remember that it's a, it's the highlight reel and have a look at your own have a look at your own Facebook um, feed or have a look at your own, you know, whatever it is that you've got, you know, Instagram or Twitter or whatever, and look at it and go, am I really being honest here about what's going on in my life? You're probably not. You probably don't want to be saying, oh, you know, I got up late. I'm having a bad hair day. Um, I had a crash on the way to work. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling, t- I feel really measurable today for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Or um, my, um, you know, this didn't go right or that didn't go right. You know, but most people don't publish that. That stuff on social media. I don't want them to actually, to be honest. I don't really need to see everybody's misery every day. Um, just <laughs> recognize that it's just recognize that it's just it, it, it's it's a highlight reel usually, um, and that's okay. It's okay that it's a highlight reel, and just recognize that your own Facebook feed is probably a highlight reel as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, you, you post pictures. Mm-hmm. You post pictures of you having a great night out, but you don't post pictures of your hangover the day after, do you? No, you don't. That's a good point. (laughs) Oh, now your book is an Amazon bestseller. How did you market your book to get to bestseller status? Um, how did I market my book to get to bestseller status? Right, what did I do? So, my goodness me, it was quite um, it was quite a process. But you have to, what you have to do is try and do your marketing all at the same time. So, so it's kind of a strategic way of doing it. And um, I used um, I used a course um, that I bought from um, a gentleman called oh, what was his name, uh, John Ty, who's got a book called Crush It with Kindle. He's also got a course. I've forgotten the name of his course, actually. And he teaches you basically how to market your book. And you have to do all your marketing all at the same time, because to get into the bestseller status, you need to um, make sure that everyone's buying at the same time. It's no good you know, everybody buying one book a day for the next five years. You want to get everybody buying your book on the same day or within the, uh, the same few days, um, because that's how Amazon um, ranks you as a bestseller. So um, you also need to make sure that you've got the right keywords in there. And, you know, it took me a long time to describe all this to you and explain it all to you. But you've got to make sure that you've got the relevant keywords, the kind of things that people are going to be searching for. One of the things that you can do is look at other books in your genre. So whatever kind of book you're going to be writing, look at other books that are very successful. Look at the, you know, they're in the sort of top five or top ten. Um, and look at the kind of look at their descriptions and the words that they're using in their titles and so on and make sure that have a look for repeaters have a look for words that are repeated so for example with mine I can't remember what keywords I used with mine but you've got to be people need to be able to find it okay so what I might have noticed is you know maybe the top five or top ten books in my genre um, I would find repeating words in the descriptions of each of these books. So it might be something like fulfillment or purpose or career or, you know, whatever. And make sure that I m- put those words into, um, into my description of my book, into my narrative, and also um, as keywords so that when people are looking for um, that kind of book, they're able to find it because people need to be able to find it. Um, also make it eye-catching, make it, make it something that people are going to be able to see, make sure, you know, the, the, the cover of your book, make sure that your book cover looks professional. It absolutely, just spend some money on your book cover. You don't have to spend hundreds or thousands, but please don't do it yourself if you're not very good at designing book covers, because there's nothing worse than an unprofessional book cover. It just makes your whole book become professional. So make sure that the book looks good and that you can read the title when it's at sort of a, a thumbnail size when it's when it's very small.
small on the screen, make sure that you can pretty much read the title as well. People like to be able to see what they're, they don't, people don't want to have to click through every time. So make sure that um, you've got a good, big, strong title on there that people can read. Make sure that it's relevant and make sure that you also use a tagline. So with my book, the title of it is Life Purpose Alchemy. Notice life purpose, because those are the kind of things that people are looking for. Um, but the tagline of it, um, which is, uh, what is my tagline? Dis uh, discover what fulfills you and do what you love for a living. So it needs to be something, people are going to maybe look at life purpose alchemy and think, oh, it's got something to do with life purpose, but I'm not sure. But then the title's telling you, discover what fulfills you and do what you love for a living. So make sure that it's got a relevant title as well. Or if, you know, if, it, if it's not a descriptive, um, you know, if it's not that kind of book, if you're writing a novel, then make sure it's got a good title that people are going to want to be, you know, they're going to want to click on, they're going to want to have a look, have a read, really think about it. Wow. Those are very great tips that you gave. That was in, in a very short span of time. So very good. But we'll also put a link to the book that you um, that you mentioned too, the, the Crush It With Kindle. We'll put that in the show notes. Sure, so that, people, so that people can check that out along with your book as well. So that people thank can you. find you and check you out as well. And good. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Lisa. It's been a fun interview, actually. I've enjoyed myself, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, I've had a good time too, learning about you and what you do and how you uh, help people become successful, passionate, and purposeful. Thank you. I hope to speak with you again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Hey, author, Chris here. I want to tell you about a program that I'm really excited about called Group Gold. For a long time, I would post on my Facebook fan page only to find crickets. Very few interactions, very few connections. That is before I discovered Facebook groups through the program Group Gold. Facebook Group Gold program is the most complete one of its kind to help you grow, engage, and monetize your Facebook group. Mark Mawinney, the program creator, will walk you through every aspect of how to create, manage, and run your Facebook group so that your tribe is coming to you. Makes it easier, doesn't it? When you've got people interacting with you because they want to be there. That's the beauty of Facebook groups over Facebook fan pages. Ever since I started the Facebook Group Gold program, I've been growing my group, building my audience, and I've got people in there who are active and who want to be there hanging out with me every single day. You can have that too. Just visit my website, www.readyrightlaunch.com and under the offer tab, select Group Gold. Then you can see for yourself the magic of Facebook groups.